It's your boy Widgie here, coming out with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And today it's a showcase of a crazy strategy that I've seen popping up here and there. And it's to do with the Germans. And it is a crazy ass rush. Yes, we've seen a few rushes with Germany in the past. But someone who sent this threat to me assured me that this is kind of insane, crazy, wild, all that good stuff. Let's have a watch. Let's break this down. Let's see what's happening here and see how scary this is. So, of course, on the top left part of the map, we have Otto von Bismarck. Uh, we're going to call him Otto. Um, actually, Bismarck is probably easy because Otto could be construed as the Ottomans. So let's say Bismarck here on the top left part of the map playing as Germany in the red. And we have well-known Izad on the bottom right part of the map playing as Japan in the Cyan here. So Izad, quite a well-known Japan player. Recently in the big brawl, um, he was against Kaiser Klein. If you guys haven't watched that, I did live stream that on YouTube. You can check out the past live stream in my section on my channel. So go and check that out if you haven't seen it already anyway let's look back at bismarck here now standard kind of stuff here uh, i see we've got um, a house market going into hunting dogs very very standard so far um we do see it's 1v1 land let's have a quick look at the deck maybe we can try and understand something from that but looking at it it seems relatively straightforward definitely in age three you've got a lot of unit shipments you've got the classic kind of black riders with the hessian jaegers in age three very very standard um age two as well looks sort of quite generic as well um we do have team cavalry attack in here along with cavalry hit points i don't normally see team cavalry in there that often but um apart from that everything seems to be relatively straightforward so we're going to be seeing this and all i know is that it's some kind of crazy rush um and yeah we'll, we'll see how crazily strong this is and as i say i am thinking about returning to a euro civ and picking one euro civ that i do want to try i'm kind of tied between germany or france because i never really gave france a proper go you know um back when i started first playing the game i never really played france that much at all and germany i have played a little bit and i did play them on the ranked ladder um quite a bit and I, I, I sort of enjoyed them, but a lot of the time it was kind of fast fortressing all the time. It was just fast fortress, fast fortress, fast fortress, or like the classic Ulan opening that you do. You get five Ulans out um, or maybe 10 Ulans in total, and then you age up kind of thing. That was kind of the thing that I was doing a lot of the time, and I think I was, I was getting a bit bored of it. So let's see this, because that is none of those strats. This is, um, this is a good old age two play here. So this is what I like to see. And um, I'm very interested to see what is going to be going down here. So we can see that Bismarck has already gone for two Settler Wagons. And now going to be aging up. What are we going to be going for? It is the Quartermaster. So nothing really has changed that much yet. 400 wood is going to be coming in when Bismarck does age up. And we can see Gangsaw now in transition as well to help with the wood. And I feel like if you rush, it's probably most likely going to be a tower. Normally with Germany, you like to actually build a tower in age two, and then it means you can just ship everything from that. You can ship all of your military from it, and you can get some serious tempo behind you in age two. So let's see how this goes. We can see that. Let's look at the macro split here. Um, we've kind of got sort of, um, I'd say 60 40. 60% um, of Vils are on wood right now, some still on food, just ensuring that we get that settler in queue. And yeah, it looks like. Um, we have the opportunity now to be able to actually build an outpost, but I don't actually see a villager going out to the outpost. Let's have a look at Bismarck's vision. We do see there's a hunt here that they're going to be pulling in and also a hunt here that's being pulled in just as we speak as well. Oh, there we go. Sorry. No, I have missed it. Always miss it. I always miss it. There it is. So the outpost is going to an unusual spot. I like this spot actually on this map because normally you would expect a forward outpost to be like around here, right in the middle. But it looks like it's going down here. But Izad does um, easily spot that with uh, Nandato Izad. I love that explorer name. Amazing. So we're going to be seeing the age up. There it is. And the card is immediately available. And boom, ladies and gents, we're going straight into a unit shipment. We are not messing around here. And that wood that's continually being chopped is also going to be put down. Uh, also going to be uh, a barracks is also going to be put down with it. And we can see also that steel traps is coming in as well. So a lot happening here. 
I'm just going to pause so we don't miss anything. So basically, majority of eels were on wood. Um, we made sure that we had the coin already available for the steel traps. And we're just making sure that we've got enough for a barracks and also a house and also an outpost. So that's why you want to get Gangsaw, I believe. It seems to make sense. You want to get the Gangsaw upgrade so you can really get that wood in at a decent rate. So it looks like just more wood is being chopped. We're going to need another house, I believe, after this. Yes, another house going down. Germany are so population heavy, guys. I say it all the time. I'm like a broken record. But if you're playing Germany, whether you're playing it in age two or age three, they require so much population because you get Ulan shipments with with uh, any military shipment you send. You get Ulans. And Ulans themselves are two pop each. So you're getting four pop added onto everything and now what do we see we do see immediate pressure here we're going to be some walls coming up from izad first layer is unsuccessful second layer is unsuccessful as well and it enables bismarck to get straight into the enemy base here and basically crossbows are just being produced for now so we've got a crossbow push with a couple of ulans couple of vils or at least one vil going down there which is uh which is not good to see Looks like the sentries are going to be called now for Izad, and he's going to try and hold off the defense here with his Yumis, being able to get up the wall, which is nice to see. Um, Yumis have 18 range. Crossbows only have 16, so it can definitely be um, definitely be helpful. And now we do see the next car coming in. Isn't a military shipment. It's three settler wagons is going to be coming in. And uh, crossbows here are going to have a little bit of trouble because we do now have Ashes on the field as well for Izad. So looks like Bismarck here is just going to have to uh, back off a little bit here, not overcommit too much. And we do just see continued crossbow production here, folks. That is what we are seeing right now. Nothing else is being created. Uh, we just do see um, some houses going down once again, always being mindful with Germany about the population because obviously we've got three settler wagons coming in and a settler wagon is two population in itself. So that's a lot of pop. And we can now see okay. two Ulans are going to be accompanying the crossbows here. Going to try and attack on another side here. And Izad is having none of it. He just knows. He senses that there's going to be some kind of attack from this side rather than from that. And he's obviously spotted the Ulans there dancing around. So we can see we're on 26 villages for Izad, Bismarck on 21. And now we're actually going to be changing into Pikeman creation here. So now Pike are coming in. Um, we don't actually see any kind of stables down at all for Izad, but I think the Pikemen are just going to be there for sieging the shrines. Very important to keep on top of the shrines when you're against a Japanese player. And the crossbows still doing a very good job. You know, they are they are still sort of shutting down the Yumi and the Eshis here with their presence and trying to just get any kind of veal pickoffs if possible. Yeah, very perfectly sniped there. There's something that you can do, guys. If you don't know, you can hit the Alt key. The Alt key here will show health. Now, if it doesn't, you need to go into your controls. But if you just hold down alt, you can see current health bars for all of the units. And that is exactly what Bismarck did there. He spotted a veal that was low and actually picked that one off, selected that one and picked that one off rather than trying to go for a veal that's full HP. Just as an FYI there, if you guys didn't know how to do that. And we can see some of the pikes here are going to be now sieging shrines, which is a key thing to do because Japan super rely on their shrines and now what do we see we do see 700 wood and a further two ulans of course coming in for bismarck so this is going to be really helpful for the infrastructure for bismarck here probably going to enable them to get a another barracks down or a stables and just continued production as well and also the opportunity to maybe go Ulans, to maybe peel some of the Vils off and get them onto gold whilst that wood is in place. We can see Great Coat is coming in now. Um, and Izad's going to try and push out here with the Ashes that he has, but it's not going to be a fantastic trade. Crossbows do counter Ashes, even though Ashes are pretty good because they're, they're quite speedy. 4.5 speed against 4 speed crossbows. And once again, looks like... Ooh, maybe not. I thought an Ashi was going to go. Yes, an Ashi does go. So just another batch of crossbows coming out now. And remember, we do only have two unit shipments in H2. 
We're not actually packing a lot in age two. It's more about unit production here for this kind of rush. Like the initial eight crossbows is very scary. Eight crossbow two Ulan is a very scary thing to see. And yes, with the wood, what are we seeing? We are seeing a second barracks going down and also a church. I don't get what the whole church thing is, guys. I mean, someone's got to talk to me about this. Is this just a new thing that Euro Civs do um, with the church? I, I honestly don't really know. Uh, we are seeing another resource shipment coming in now, 700 coin. And this is a potential for you to think about maybe going age three. So, so in this kind of scenario, there's two ways that you could probably go now. You could probably double down into age two, which would mean maybe building a stable instead of a barracks. And with the coin coming in, you could use that to produce Ulans. So you could have Ulans and crossbows. That's the kind of combo that you could do. Or you could just simply save it up when it does come in and then simply go into age three because Germany age three is super scary you know so many so many unit shipments that you can get nine Ulans for example eight skirms and three Ulans uh, you know the war wagons is is a nuts shipment as well three war wagons three Ulans it's crazy Germany is a very sort of underrated civ I think I think people know that Germany is strong but I'm seeing Germany perform extremely well um, in this latest patch. So we can see another Ville getting picked off there. Bismarck doing a good job. And we do now see the coin is hitting. And with that coin, of course, uh, we're actually getting some more Ulans as well. Sorry, Ulans come with nearly every shipment, guys. Sorry, not just military shipments. They come with pretty much every shipment that you that you can see on here. There's always Ulans being added. It's only the kind of upgrade cards and like Eco Theory, uh, Cavalry hit points. Like you don't get Ulans with that. And now what do we see? We do see the age up, which is exactly what I just mentioned. We've got the Exile Prince coming in now. So now we've got the fast age up. So this early pressure is very, very scary. So yes, this was kind of a rush, but also it, it gives you some options. You don't always have to continue in H2 all the time. And yes, look, I do now see that there is that stables. I didn't see where that went down, but there it is. So now we have a double racks, outpost, and a stables here. And a nice little wall as well. So a real little mini base here that Bismarck has got together. And the... Uh, Ulan is now in queue. And it's very, very crucial when you do go into age three to always upgrade your Ulans because you're going to use them so much. So it's so, so crucial to immediately queue an upgrade. And I'm hoping that Bismarck is going to be queuing. Yes, there it is. It's so, so crucial because you get the Ulans with your shipments. So you must always make sure to have your Ulans upgraded. And now we're going to be seeing that. So we can see the kind of macros changed a little bit now. We're going into more of a food gold. Now we're transitioning into skirm more now. So we're kind of ditching the crossbowmen and we're moving into skirm, which means food and gold. And um, we can now see Izad is peeling off uh, his army, splitting it into two and uh, going across the land here to see what he can find. But yeah, we can see now nine new lands in and skirms are coming in now as well. And is actually going to get a nice pick off there of a vill, so Bismarck losing a villager there. But actually, on the other hand, is going to also be pushing whilst Izad pushes his base. He's going to be pushing and moving in now with his crossbows. And he's not actually getting any crossbow upgrades here. Um, the Ulans actually have surprisingly good siege, guys. Uh, 24 siege for these, and that is just the GG is just there. There's nothing much Izad can do in this position. He's age two. He's got so much in his base here and also the Ulans are popping out here as well that we can see militiamen have been called at Bismarck's base as well which means it's basically going to clear up any of the ashes on this side so there we go guys very very clear cut I like this is it a tower rush is it still the same old tower rush that we've seen in the past with Germany I don't know I don't think it entirely is because it I like the card order because there's not so much commitment to units that much. We have obviously the eight crossbow that you go with initially for some pressure. And then we're going into some kind of resource shipment first. Um, actually, no, it was straight in with the settlers. It was the three settlers. And then it was kind of 700 wood, then 700 coin. And then you have that option, of course. Um, and most of the time you want to take the option to go to age three, I think. Just looking at this because Germany is so, so good in age three. It's hard to not say no to that. 
So I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope you learned something as well. And I hope you give Germany a go. I think I might give them a go, but I'm still tied between Germany or France. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below if you want me to play either Germany or France and give them a go to see how Euro Civs are because I am a native enjoyer. I do love Hauser as well. So, and obviously I do like some of the Asian Civs like India and China. I find them quite interesting. Euro Civs, not so much for me. So of course, let me know down below. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. I'll catch you in the next video or the next stream. Catch you later, guys.